So hey everybody, welcome back to Bow and Arrow Garage. So today I'm going to be working on the C3 Corvette and my goal in this video is to get the engine cranked over under its own power. It'll be the first time I do so since I put the engine in the car and um, I, I don't really expect this to be a long video, but I think it's a, an important step in the progress of getting this thing started. You know, I talked about, I, I was trying to get it started by the end of July. Obviously that didn't happen. Unfortunately, August has come and gone also, and I still haven't gotten it uh, started. But, you know, I believe in making goals just because you don't accomplish them doesn't really necessarily a bad thing. But if you don't set goals, you're never going to accomplish them. So so um, with that being said, um, this month, I am definitely going to try to get it started. Um, but I'm going to take a baby step here and try to get it cranked over and build up some oil pressure. So basically what I need to do is just get all the wiring integrated into the starter and then the wiring from the starter integrated into the, the car system. And that way I can get it, uh, you know, just cranking. Um, I definitely will not get it started on this video because I don't have all my computer wiring hooked up. But I, I want to make sure that I do this safely and don't burn up the, uh, the, the car wire harness or anything else. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of be slow and methodical and just do one thing at a time. Um, you'll see um, it's probably going to be a mess initially, but then I'll slowly and surely start getting everything cleaned up and get it hooked up properly. So with that being said, I'm going to jump into the video and uh, we'll see where we can go from there. forgot to mention that I did get the throttle body in so um, as you can see it's a I don't know if you can see with the glare but it's an Edelbrock throttle body um, it did come with a new IEC and a, a TPS on it um, but I ended up going in and putting the uh, stock ones in place of them um, I just heard some I've just heard bad things about the ones that it, they came with they were an aftermarket version and I've heard that they don't last very long so so anyways, I uh, went with that. So the throttle body's installed, got everything hooked up. And uh, so basically now with my wiring, I do need to replace the, the coolant temperature sensor, but down at the bottom, I've got my alternator wiring hooked up. And like I said, this is kind of uh, somewhat temporary, temporary permanent, I guess you could say. Um, the only thing is, is I have uh, my inlet air temperature sensor and my MAF sensor, my mass airflow sensor, um, still disconnected. I obviously don't have the, um, the intake in at this point, but, um, but it's coming together. I've got the pigtail harnesses, like I said, they're in. Everything is hooked up with that. And, you know, I, I'm just kind of doing this stuff when I have uh, spare time. I'm also working on my toolbox, try to get it organized a little bit, just because I have so much stuff just kind of haphazardly laying around. So, and this is a, this is a perfect example, you know, um, so for years and years and years, everything I worked on was all strictly SAE. And now, you know, with the modern cars, everything's going to metric. So I've had to invest in a lot of metric tools and so they um so they didn't really have a permanent home in the toolbox so i kind of shadow everything i've seen some guys on youtube they're they're getting toolboxes from these different companies and everything's already shadowed and it's a really great thing to to do that so i'm trying to shadow all my tools in here so i know where everything is at the end of the day and it's a quick cleanup um so i have uh, just trying to figure out exactly where everything is going to go. And like I've got miscellaneous stuff, I don't know what I'm going to do with that yet. It makes it a mess when you're trying to work on your car and you don't have a lot of room as it is. And then you have all of this mess and all of that mess going on with your toolbox. So like I said, I'm, uh, I'm making progress. It's just going a lot slower than I would hope. But today I want to make some significant strides in getting this thing closer to where it needs to be. And then we'll move on from there. 
Okay, so when I say I'm just doing a, a kind of a rough, sim similar to what I need to do, this is what I'm talking about. This is a, uh, the red box there is just a, a J box, similar to the one that I put on, that I used, I should say, on my 84 C10 when I did the LS swap on it. So that black cable coming back is actually the positive battery cable. Um, and then the red cable is a starter cable going up to the starter that's actually a starter cable off of my 09 tahoe so so anyways i'm just kind of piecemealing it together right now i actually like the way the tahoe cable um routes so i'm probably going to end up using that um and uh anyways so I'll just kind of give you an idea of what i'm doing here like i said this is going to be a very very rough go just to get this thing cranked over so right now i'm going to jump into i'm going to do a uh, old pressure sender real quick and then after that, we'll uh, look into the PCV system and then we'll go from there. Okay, so I got my um, oil pressure gauge mocked up. And I just have it sitting here. It's not a, it's definitely not a permanent installation. I wanted to use a mechanical gauge when I'm first uh, spinning the engine over. Just because when you're using an electric driven gauge, when you have the key in start, then the gauge doesn't work until you release it and i want to be able to watch the, the oil pressure come up okay guys i installed this uh, pcv valve um on the recommendation of if you've ever heard of mighty mouse catch cans they just recommended the cheap alternative to do this pretty quick is to connect it from there up to the nipple on the uh, intake and on the passenger side theoretically they want you to hook it um from the forward nipple on the passenger side valve cover to a fitting on your intake uh, tube, um, on your cold air intake. And right now, obviously I don't have that installed, so I just ran it up to the southern nipple here on the intake manifold, just to give uh, some ventilation to the crankcase. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this guy off here, hook up the battery, and I will be ready to crank this thing over. All right guys, so this is gonna be the first crank. Um, since I did the engine swap. Basically all I'm doing is I'm gonna build up oil pressure. I pulled off the serpentine belt so that uh, my water pump and my power steering pump are not gonna be uh, turning. I don't have either system serviced. So, um, but I've got the starter hooked up. I've got uh, everything wired in. The computer is not wired in, so the car is not gonna start. I'm not trying to get it to start. I just wanna hear it crank over and watch it build up oil pressure. So I have my oil pressure gauge right here. It's kind of goofy, but that's kind of what I got. So uh, we'll see what kind of state of the charge the battery's in, and we're going to go for it. Here we go. And nothing. And so I was just wondering if that was going to happen. So I'm going to have to take a look and uh, see what I got going on here. Um, I think I remember now that I didn't uh, ever put a ground on the engine. So. Anyways, so let me get a ground hooked up and then we'll go from there. Here goes the uh, first crank. I actually did uh, bump the starter and it actually did engage. So. Okay, I'm looking to see if oil pressure comes up. So far it's not. Connections. It's there. Let me check the oil. So it turns out, I guess the uh, the starter circuit is completed by the horn relay, and I had not reconnected the wire coming from the horn relay to the battery. So it was very odd, but or to the starter, I should say. Okay, we are full of oil. All right, I'm gonna get in here and crank it a little bit more. And the engine sounds weird because I have the spark plugs pulled out. Uh, got a little bit of oil pressure. Basically, that was just to make sure that I had everything connected correctly. Obviously, I missed that one wire, so got it hooked up. I'll have to go through now and finalize everything and make sure that I get a good ground 
I kind of put a, a temporary wire for the engine block to the frame. So I'll get a nice heavy gauge uh, ground wire for that. I'll go ahead and get my uh, wires run. So you can see this was the existing wire coming off the horn relay to the starter. So you can see it's pretty, it's got a, somebody has spliced into it there. So I'll go ahead and replace that wire completely. Okay guys, last week um, I cranked the engine over and I was trying to get a video out that night, but I just ran out of time. So I've been doing a little bit of work to the car since then. I ordered this um, alternator wiring kit from Summit. So I've got the wire basically hooked up to the alternator. It's coming up around here. Um, basically tied to the wire harness. It's gonna shoot to the back and then go down to um, the right hand back side of the engine. Now I'm gonna wire in this little mini fuse. Um, I'm gonna have a wire coming directly off the starter. It's gonna go to this one lug here. And then the battery cable is gonna come attached to that same lug on the starter. And then I'm gonna hook up the alternator wire to this other side here. And then um, my constant power for my computer and probably a couple of other things. It's got a uh, 200 amp fuse. And really honestly, um, the whole intent of this is, is not necessarily to protect um, the smaller wiring. This is to uh, protect if there's a massive short in the battery cable then it'll protect everything on the opposite side. And then obviously if there's a massive short on the alternator side cable, then, um, then it'll, it should protect and blow. But I'm also gonna put um, fusible links on the wire going to the uh, constant power of the computer and any other accessory that I run off of it. So, so anyways, with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and try to figure out a good location for this thing. And then uh, we'll go from there. Okay guys, um, I, um, I'm ashamed to say it took me way longer than it should have to get this thing mounted, but there is my um, little fuse, fuse block with the 200 amp fuse in it. The um, cable on the right goes down to the starter lug. The cable coming off the back routes around that uh, connects to the alternator. And that red wire is still temporary, but that one, that's the wire that goes to the horn relay. Um, that's to get power to the uh, key circuit. So, so anyways, um, it took me a while to kind of figure out where I wanted to route it and different things. And you can see the main starter cable. It's got the silver heat wrap on it. Um, I did order some headers. I don't know if I mentioned that or not, but they should be in the next couple of days. So that's kind of sitting there. It's that's pretty much where it's going to be for the most part. But obviously, it might need a little tweaking around the headers once I get them in. And then also, uh, there you go. You can see I got a ground wire for the engine to the chassis hooked up there. So I wanted to try to get under the car and give you a better uh, idea of what we did here. So I talked about possibly using the Tahoe battery cable. I didn't end up using that. I just ran the uh, battery cable, the positive battery cable from the car straight to the uh, starter lug here. Um, and the other one was just gonna be a piggyback and eventually I may end up putting something like that, put a stud somewhere where the battery cable to the car terminates somewhere and then this uh, cable ties into it. But for now, I just ran the cable directly from the battery to the starter. And so it goes back behind this heat shield back here. And this other cable with this convoluted tubing on it, that's the one that goes up to that little fuse at the top. So, so at the end of the day, I've got my battery cable run straight to the starter. And then I've got this smaller six gauge wire going up to the fuse block. And then on the opposite side of the fuse block, I've got the wire going out to the alternator. Um, like I said, I'll use a fusible link and tie it into the constant power for the computer. And then also it's gonna have the wire that jumps across over to the horn relay to complete the start circuit. So. So um, anyways, that's gonna be kind of it for the uh, wiring at this point. So one final thing, I just wanted to give kind of a view from underneath the car. Obviously the other day I had all the wires hanging down and it looked pretty ghetto, but I just wanted to show that everything is nice and neat now. And see if I can get you a shot. There's a shot of the starter, the wires going across and everything. So, so that's gonna be it for the wiring. Um, I'm going to mess around a little bit this week and tie in the computer to the uh, to the little fuse 
and then uh, probably get the key wire going across and tied in. I also got the OBD2 port, so I'm getting close now, so very, very close. So anyways, that being said, I'm going to go ahead and shut this video down, and then uh, we'll see you in the next one. Okay, folks, that's going to be pretty much it for the starter wiring. Um, like I said, I did order some uh, headers for the car, so I may have to tweak the wiring a little bit once I get the headers in. Um, I'm first going to have to make sure that the headers fit, because that's kind of a question mark. Um, if they don't fit this car, then they will definitely fit my truck, and I'll end up using them over there. But I'm certainly hoping that they work on the car. Um, like I said, if they do, then I'll just have to tweak the wires a little bit. And then I'm going to wrap everything with heat wrap, make sure the wires don't melt on me. And then uh, we'll be that much closer. So I, I'm really, really getting close. So um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to hit that like button. Don't forget to share it with your friends. And I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel. Thanks and have a great day and we hope to see you again next time.